Valley and 1530 FM, 102.3 WCTR, and uh, of course, it is Talk of the Towns. I'm Keith Thompson. Caitlin Patton uh, joining us. National Music Festival uh, getting underway on uh, Sunday. Uh, Jamie McCreary and Ben Honeycutt uh, joining us as well. And uh, to the Mana Saxophone Quartet, uh, just uh, part of the uh, the music that you're going to hear. They, those guys were great. I loved, uh, loved their music. I didn't know that the, the saxophone was, was that versatile an, an instrument. So Yeah, they're pretty amazing. Come hear them on Sunday night at the Garfield Center. And uh, just a flat out, it's making me wish that I had uh, taken my trumpet playing a little bit farther than uh, than I did. So it was just like somewhere somewhere along the way, the realization that when I started playing guitar more and more, that you, you can't really accompany yourself on the trumpet and sing at the same time. So. That's very true. Yeah. However, there's always time. You could always start taking trumpet lessons again. Well, I, I, st I, st I actually start, I, pick, I actually have my trumpet here, and I, I picked it up and, and uh, have started playing around with it a little bit more, and I'm realizing just how, after 20 years or so, just how out of shape my lips are. So I have to build up, I have to build up my... Uh, um, build up my pucker again to, to get out and play trumpet. But I, I got it out again because uh, uh, one of the bands that I'm in, we're, we're, we're talking about uh, uh, playing Johnny Cash's Ring of Fire, and of course you would need a trumpet on that. So, right. mm -hmm. so but I just haven't worked up, uh, haven't worked my range back up uh, yet. To be. I could play the notes, I just haven't gotten my range back yet. So. You'll get there. I'll, I'll get there one of these days. So, uh, so uh, just to, to kind of recap and uh, just to, to let uh, let folks know some of the, some of the other things that will be going on at the uh, the National Music Festival. Yeah. Well, again, it starts on Sunday, and the first formal concert um, at six forty-five we have an informal free outdoor concert. But the first formal concert will be the Mono Quartet, and they'll be playing. Uh, some of the repertoire that you just heard and lots more, so I hope that you'll join us for that if you can. Kind of whetted, whetted your appetite a little bit. Yes. <laughs> and they will also be playing a concerto with the orchestra. They probably mentioned that mm -hmm. um, when they were in here, and you heard a little snippet of that, minus the orchestra, obviously. We didn't quite fit a whole symphony orchestra <laughs> in the studio here. But uh, they will be playing with the orchestra on June 9th at 7.30 p.m. at Washington College. So that is not to be missed. We're really looking forward to hearing them, mm -hmm. them do that. But we have, again, concerts every day. We have a lot going on this coming Thursday, June 7th. Uh, like most of our concerts, it's also at 7.30 p.m. It's at Washington College and Taws Theater in the Gibson Center for the Arts. And it is what we call a potpourri concert. And what that is, is uh, we, we know that when you bring 170 musicians together, there will be a lot of spontaneous generation of music and ensembles, and we want to give them a chance to play something that they choose themselves. Mm -hmm. So we, don't, we do two potpourri concerts during the festival. We do not program those in advance. It is left completely open for ensembles that are put together here at the festival. You know, if, for example, a string quartet decides that they would like to play something, they will rehearse the piece of their choice. And the morning of the potpourri concert, they will audition for our ensemble's coordinator. And he will he's one of our mentors. And he will choose which ensembles get to play that night. So that's a really fun concert. Again, that's June 7th. Uh, you'll get to hear quite a variety of chamber music and different types of ensembles, different types of music. That, those potpourri concerts are always a lot of fun. On uh, Wednesday, June 6th, also at 7.30 p.m., there is a concert at the Garfield Center that, among other pieces, will feature what is possibly the worst piece of music ever written. Okay, that, that's, a, that's a big selling point. Uh, number, number one, who wrote it? It's not Justin Bieber, right? No, not Justin no, Bieber. <laughs> it was actually written by Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> oh, Benjamin Franklin, not known for his musical prowess. No, but uh, he did write a string quartet, which we will hear on Wednesday, and it, it it is terrible, but it is worth hearing for the historical significance and the the entertainment value of something that Ben Franklin wasn't very good at. <laughs> <laughs> so there was something that Ben Franklin wasn't very good at, I guess. Yes, there was. Okay. And this particular piece uh, was written for essentially non-musicians. So it is a string quartet, <laughs> but most string quartets have two violins, a viola and a cello. Yes. This one is for three violins and a cello, and it mm -hmm. is 
written so that the instruments will be specially tuned, the strings will be tuned to different notes than they normally would be, and the entire piece is played only on open strings. The, the musicians do not use the fingers of their left hand at all to stop the strings, so it's, it'll be entertaining. And we have actual good music on that program as okay. well. There'll be a, a septet by Beethoven. Uh, there'll be a, a solo violin piece which will feature Jessica Mathis, one of our um, violin mentors, and she is the concertmaster of the Austin Symphony in Texas, which is an orchestra that is, I think, over a hundred years old now, and she is their youngest concertmaster ever, and also their first female concertmaster. So she's really quite something. Mm. And also on that program is a piece called Eine Kleine Tischmusik, and it is a piece for four percussionists sitting at a wooden table wearing chef's hats and uh, beating on the table with wooden spoons. And it's really fun visually as well as you know, hearing the, the music and the rhythm, but you'll enjoy watching them as well for that piece. And on Tuesday evening, like the other concerts at 7.30 p.m., uh, we're doing a concert at St. Paul's Church, uh, sort of between Rock Hall and Chestertown. So we're getting out of downtown Chestertown for that evening, mm -hmm. and um, the, there is a chamber music series, as many of your listeners may know and may attend dur during the winter season at St. Paul's, and it's a great place for chamber music. We're looking forward to doing that. Uh, that includes a number of pieces, including a cor uh, quintet, excuse me, for Guitar and Strings by Baccarini, and that will feature our guitar mentor, Camilo Carrara, from Brazil. Um, another piece that will be on this concert that I'm looking forward to personally is a piece for brass ensemble called Don Giovanni Goes to Hell. Mm -hmm. And it is based on the, the Don Giovanni or Don Juan story, and he clearly gets what he deserves. <laughs> I'm thinking a lot of dissonant uh, chords in this, right? I have actually not heard it yet. Oh, okay. So I am looking forward to hearing it for the first time myself. But that concert will also feature um, eight pieces for viola and double bass, and also a piece called Mississippi Five by Jim Parker, which is a, a wind quintet piece that um, we heard on the radio, and we just loved the piece and decided to program it for this year, and the musicians who are playing it uh, have really enjoyed listening to it and, and getting to know it, and they're excited to start rehearsing it when they arrive. Mm -hmm. Actually, they rehearse tomorrow evening after the orientation session, so before the festival even officially begins on Sunday, the rehearsals will start. So the Don Giovanni piece, probably some augmented and diminished chords. I keep trying to introduce those in one of my bands, not not to any sort of success. So, right, but I'm sure you'll hear some for the for Don yes. Giovanni goes to hell. <laughs> And I guess a big shout out uh, to the uh, the folks that are uh, providing uh, uh, homes, uh, opening up their homes uh, for the musicians. I know there was a, a call that, that was uh, made out to the community, so a, a big thank you uh, to the folks uh, uh, that are able to provide the homes. And any uh, big thank yous uh, as we're getting ready to, uh, to wrap up the broadcast? Oh gosh, too many to, uh, to list everyone, but just a few. Uh, in addition to the hosts who have been incredibly generous, we have so many great volunteers who are helping. And all of our venues, especially Washington College, uh, we've had a great partnership with Washington College and we are so appreciative of what they're providing for us. Also the Garfield Center, the Mainstay, the Rock Hall Volunteer Fire Company, k &L Services that we were talking about earlier. All of the venues have just been so generous to us, as well as the hosts, the community in general, has been incredibly welcoming. We're so thrilled to have the festival here, and we look forward to keeping it here for many years to come. And if uh, folks want to get more information uh, where they can go and uh, uh, check out the schedule of events. Uh... You can find us online at www.nationalmusic.us, and there is a a link there that says schedule that will give you the full schedule not only for the concerts but for all of the rehearsals which are all free and open to the public and children are encouraged to come to rehearsals. Uh, you can also call us at 410-778-2064. And I guess we'll uh, quickly we'll get uh, Jamie and, and Ben back up here again. So uh, your first time on radio so uh, are, are you relieved now? Did, did you have a good time with us today? Yeah it was a little nervous but it was fun. I hope I can do it again soon. And, uh, and, uh, and Ben, I still like your I still like your Pink Floyd T-shirt. So. <laughs> <laughs>
And uh, so, uh, we, uh, so again, it is the uh, National Music Festival uh, uh, kicking off a Sunday evening. Uh, Chestertown and, of course, in, in Rock Hall and the points in between for the next couple of weeks. So, uh, so uh, don't uh, don't be surprised if you see a, a lot of uh, musicians uh, carrying uh, carrying their instruments and the, their cases around the town and. Uh, eating at your restaurants and, uh, and shopping in the shops and uh, just all around town. So it's uh, uh, something in the next couple of weeks will be a nice little economic boon for the town, certainly open for it. So uh, thanks a lot. That's uh, Caitlin Patton uh, joining us along with Jamie McCrary as well as uh, Ben Honeycutt. And a big thank you to the Mata Saxophone Quartet Talk of the Towns here on the Town AM 1530 FM 102.3 WCTR. It's uh, Talk of the Towns. Uh, thanks a lot.